blessings and peace. This is still Unexpected Virtue Week with the unexpected virtue being anger. It's June 12th and I talked to you about anger as an aspect of love and then also some of the scriptures, uh, being angry at some of the scriptures and courtesy of uh, a book from Phyllis Tribble. And now I bring a question that I get quite regularly. And the question is, is it okay to be angry with God? So <clears throat> the short answer is, yeah, it is. It really is. There's nothing you can bring to God that God can't handle. And hopefully we just really know that. But <clears throat> the, that'd be a really short devotional if I just ended right there. So the longer answer. We have a really famous story of Jesus in the temple turning the tables because he was so, so angry. And then we also have that story that we read uh, this year um, of Jesus at Lazarus's grave and that weeping. And if you have, of course, Vine's expository uh, dictionary, which is not a common book, but theological geeks have it. And what it says is that he he snorted with anger, like a horse would, right? Um, that, but it's that noise you make sometimes when you're crying so hard in your grief um, that it it almost sounds like you're angry because you're grieving just that powerfully. That's the kind of grief we're talking about here for Jesus when his friend Lazarus died. So if you have that kind of grief going on, then that's what we're working with. So is it okay to be angry with God? Of course it is. All of our emotions come from God. And anger, any emotion, but anger is a window to our soul. So the question is, what is that window showing us? And if that window to your soul um, is showing just that kind of genuine emotion. But we have this example from 2 Samuel 6, where King David gets angry with God, but he gets angry with God because one of his men, Uzziah, right, um, is killed, and it says is killed by God. Now, we can talk about how all that is written in scripture a little later, but he's killed because he touches the Ark of the Covenant, trying to steady it when the oxen who are carrying it um, stumble. So as a result of what happens, um, David gets really mad at God and this tension builds, right? So there's this unhelpful fear of God that builds up in David. Um, he's really afraid of God's wrath and it results in him missing out, um, missing out on God's presence. And anyway, so there's uh, Psalm 13 is a result of, in theory, this encounter. Um, you know, how long, O oh Lord, and will you forget me? David has to work through all of these emotions, or Psalm 13 is a story of what it is when we have to work through that kind of window to the soul emotion of thinking that God has done something unjustly and then what it is to get in touch with those feelings when we're blaming God for something, a death of someone that we care about, right? And then we have to move through all of those stages of grief and blame is certainly one of them, right? And in this Psalm, Psalm 13, you'll see that David does that. And that's why studying scripture in the context of so many other people in the community is so important. It's also why knowing a scripture like Ephesians 4.26 is important because it says, be angry, but do not sin, right? So 
it's not the anger necessarily that is the issue, but it's what we do with our anger that's the issue. And those are the things that we need to be really, really accountable for in that community context with others. So be angry with God. Sure, be angry with God. God knows God can take it, right? But it's what you do with that anger, especially in context with other humans. That's what's really going on and where we need to be kept in check in our relationships in Christian community. This week has been a really wonderful week to explore this reality of anger. Those in scripture who have helped give insight and just seeing what the Bible has to say, how it can instruct us, and what this emotion really is about. Because God has given us all of our emotions, what we do with our emotions. That says a lot about our relationship with God. Clearly, it's time for me to go. God bless you this week. Amen.